very pleased to say that we've been joined up here on the media gantry by Manchester Storm head coach Ryan Finnerty. Ryan, what have you made of the game so far? It's good. Pre-season, it's pretty fast-paced, and uh, yeah, no, I mean, obviously, uh, this first team had a lot of skill, and, and uh, but I think I think uh, Sheffield definitely edged up here. I thought they had better puck, uh, puck possession, but uh, pretty fast-paced for a pre-season game. And you'll be bringing your Storm team here in a couple of weeks' time over at the Sheffield Arena for uh, an exciting start to your pre-season campaign. Yeah, we get going in a week's time. Uh, a little bit behind, you know, the big boys, but uh, yeah, we get going. We'll uh, we'll play Coventry away, and then uh, we'll roll in here on, on the following Saturday. So it's uh, summer's over, and it's it's back at it. Is the recruitment done? It looks as though the roster is pretty much full up. Yeah, we're done. Um, yeah, we're we're all done here. Last uh, about ten days, we've been done. Just a uh, race against the clock right now with everyone else getting visas and, and bodies into the country and and getting going. But uh, everything looks good. We should. Uh, hopefully have a, a full roster. We might be in short one or two guys, depending on uh, how quickly we can turn around the, the last phases, but um, everything's, uh, everything's looking well. How much does the, the rink size at Altrincham affect the way that you recruit? It's a full-size pad at Brayhead, it's much smaller in Manchester. Has that been in your in your mind when you've been looking at potential players to bring in? Yeah, definitely. Um, you know, I, Fortunately, I've had the opportunity to play in, in Cardiff as a player. Uh, been able to kind of go back on that. I've been able to lean on, on guys like G, who have coached in, in small rinks and you know the ice uh, the ice uh, isn't great you know the pucks bounce and it's a small little rink and we we wanted to get big bodies it's all about getting pucks in the net and getting the second chances and you know if you bring in a team that can't get inside it, it makes a long year in your own building and we didn't want that so we brought in an element that i think uh, hopefully will suit that small rink but we also have to be able to play and compete on the big ice you've also been able to use the links with the University of Salford against your advantage this season. I believe you it was three last season, is it six this year that you've yeah. been able to use? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, you know, we've we were able to gain some some pretty good signatures through the uh, the university links. They've been they've been unreal with, with us and, and uh, the process to get guys in they they've been they've been uh, amazing. Um, you know and to be able to go from three to six over overnight is, is huge. Um, and you know we built the at the back of uh, both of our team kind of through that university program. Uh, we were able to get some some veteran guys and, and some young guys, you know, uh, in and, and, and under our budget, which is really, you know, what you're what you're using the university for. When you joined the Brayhead clan, they were a fairly new team, a couple of years into their existence. Same thing again for the Storm. How much have you noticed about the the off ice setup and how it's things operating in uh, in Manchester? Yeah, obviously we're we're putting in our own kind of systems and the way we want to run it and. Uh, much like we did, you know, uh, much like I did in, in Brayhead when we went there, it was a, a, a pretty dry nucleus. When I, when I, when Kevin Berg and I rolled in there, we only had one staff. You know, everybody had had had, had quit or folded or had left. And um, you know, in, in Manchester, we have a, a, a much better structure. You know, uh, Neil Russell's been there. He's been working there for a few years, building, doing what he can. Is is almost a one-man band. You know, and so we're able to get in and, and help out and. Obviously, we want to change things and, and do things the way that I like to do it, and with regards to the on ice. Um, and you know, hopefully, hopefully that uh, turns into bums on seats, and more people are coming and, and, and watch us play. And then obviously, the business grows when that happens, and that's kind of where we're at. But you know, I'm, I'm basically where I was four four years ago in Brayhead, playing in front of 12, 1300, and we got to find a way to get that to 2,000, two and a half thousand, if we can. There'll be some big games against Sheffield, no doubt, this season. What have you? What have you made of them uh, tonight? A couple of uh, a couple of new signings, but a lot of old familiar faces as well. Yeah, obviously it's good seeing Scotty Arson. You know, I've had Scotty for four years. It's good. It's, it's awful seeing him in those colours, but it's uh, it's good to see him again. And um, no, they're going to be good. I mean, any you know, anytime Paul's behind the bench, you're going to have a good quality team that, that you know one number one works hard. Uh, you, you don't you don't typically ever outwork a, a Sheffield team. You try to match them or better, and, uh, and and that's been Paul's bread, uh, bread and butter. And he, He's mixed it with some really good skill, and you know it's it's uh, it's pretty early to, to start hand picking, but it's uh, it's scary when you look at some of the rosters around the league and what uh, you know where this league has gone again. You look at Cardiff, Nottingham, Belfast, you know uh, these guys, and even down, you know I think I think we've created a good roster, and sure Brayhead will again when when they complete. So it's going to be a competitive year. It's going to be difficult. Uh, it's going to be difficult. Obviously, you know we're we're kind of that underdog mentality, which I like, and. Um, you know, worried about what we take. You know, worried about what we do right now. But it's it's nice to come here without the, uh, the without our season starting, able to just kind of watch it as a half fan, half coach here, and just see what's going on. Can you still really claim to, claim to be the underdogs? If you're the team with a conference with with two new teams, Guildford and Milton Keynes. 
Well, it depends what I guess depends what your goal is. If yeah, obviously your goal is win a conference. Yeah, we want to do that. But when you know you're looking beyond that and you want to compete for a league, which everybody should be looking right now. I don't think anybody's settling for conference wins. But yeah, absolutely. And, and by all means, we, you know we are we are an underdog. I think you know with, with the way we stand and the way everything's going on. But it's going to be fun. It's it's fun to have two new teams in. Guilford and MK provide that kind of unknown factor. I think uh, uh, Coventry, obviously, uh, you know, they've kind of had the, the Brayhead luck, I guess you could say. Now they're they're in this conference and, and should be, but it's a lot of pressure. You know, when they when they got the pressure on them, they're expected to win. That comes with a lot of, you know, they, there's a lot of uh, uh, expectation on your head and, and see how that goes. But like I said, I'm, I'm excited uh, to get going. I think it's going to be, I think it's been a great year. I think it's going to be great competition, you know, up and down the, the country. And, um, you know, ultimately it's... Uh, like you said, you want to. You want to. Right now, everybody wants to win the league. Nobody's sitting there going, "Don't care how we do. We want to win our conference." But um, yeah, I think it's. Uh, I, I'm excited for it. We're here in Ice Sheffield. You won here on your last visit with Brayhead, an overtime victory uh, last season. What are what are some of your other memories as uh, as a player and a coach in here? If you play in Sheffield, you don't have too many great memories of playing in here and practicing in here every day. This is a place that, you know, it's not, it's not you'd rather be of the arena. <laughs> but uh, no, see, I mean, it looks, it actually looks pretty good. I was just saying, it, I should put some money into it or done something, but it looks pretty good in here. It actually looks like a like a, a proper hockey arena now. So, no, it's it's good. I mean, it's just such a, um, you know, you come, you come from Brayhead or you go to Manchester where there's one rink. You know, you have one rink, and in Brayhead, I spent five or six weeks a year traveling to practice every day. You know, you'd be begging for this. You know, you, you curse it when you're here, and you'd be begging for it back in any any town or city you're coaching or playing in. So, it, it's a great uh, it's a great tool to utilize. It great. It um, uh, you know, I do believe that it is easier for teams to come in here and steal points, and it is a big arena. And I, whether that's mentally or just I don't know, who knows? But I, for whatever reason, it is when when you're on that bench there. It's, it, it's more difficult to coach in this arena as it's a home as a home coach, and it's a lot. You know, I look forward to to see the season and seeing if we get a game in here because you you can find a way to compete. And they've been such a powerhouse for so long. Just go back to a point you made about having to travel uh, to a rink in Brayhead. Obviously, you're missing uh, missed a month of a season uh, with no home ice. It's the same again for Brayhead. It's the same again for Belfast again at a point in this season. Just how much does that affect you as a coach when it's road game after road game after road game? You know, I don't, I don't think you, you notice it as much when you're on the road on the weekend. I think it's just your day to day, you know, and it, it's difficult. You know, you're driving, you know, a couple hours a day to practice, and and sometimes your your guys are getting up at 6 a.m. to get on the ice for eight, and and you know how much are you getting out of that practice? And it, it's a lot of driving, and it's difficult, and you know, where you do it for about five, five, six weeks and over there, and it. it it happens right at the start of the season, so some guys it takes them two, three months to settle in. But you know, in once you get through that, if you can get some wins on the road, you know, you benefit from the home ice advantage in the second half. You, you, you know, I remember there was months we didn't leave the home, we didn't leave home a couple of years ago. I think in February we didn't have a away game. You know, so it it does come back to you, but it definitely is uh, it, it definitely is um, getting used to, and you're driving those small Scottish roads to get to a. You know, an arena in the middle of nowhere. You can have some guys that you know, they learn how to drive. That's for sure. But you can, you got some guys that are kind of going, "Huh? How long are we doing this for?" And, uh, four more weeks. But uh, yeah, and like I said, that, that's one thing we said in matches. We're always in that arena, you know, day and night. So that that is a that's a huge bonus. How do those long long road trips differ when you're a coach as to when you're a player? Obviously, you're sitting at the front of the bus rather than the back of it. Yeah, like, you know, the road trips are just, that's just part and partial of hockey. You don't, you know, whether you do them all at once, you, you spread them out like, you know, everyone else, but it, it's no big deal. I don't think players mind, you know, it's the it's the, the preparation work that, you know, you got to find difficult. As a coach, you find it difficult. As a player, you find it annoying because you show up, you do your thing, and, you know, uh, go through the systems and, and, and you get it. And you, you go to work on the weekend where... As a coach, you're trying to prepare, but you're also, you know, you got a limited amount of ice time, and you're driving an hour there and then an hour back, and it, it, it takes its toll. It definitely takes its toll, and that's why I said, you know, the benefit of having such a beautiful facility next door. When I was here, you take advantage of it. You just, you think, oh God, we got to go 100 feet, uh, and then you go over there and you got to go 40 miles. But um, uh, it's going to be good. You know what? I'm looking forward to it. It's, uh, I think it's going to be a, a competitive season, and I think. You know the rosters that the teams are building now, like you said, are, are competing with uh, you know the so-called upper upper leagues, and I, and I think we got to kick that stigma. And, you know the only way to do that is to continuously beat teams above us, like we've been doing in Champions Leagues, and and hopefully here again tonight. Well, we thank you very much for your time, Ryan. We're going to have to leave it there because the officials are back We're out. Back. They'll be underway shortly. 
and we'll uh, see you during the season. We look forward to it. See you guys. Thank you. Thanks for having me.